Good afternoon to all our viewers and welcome to our 30 days growth experience of leadership in a time of Corona. I'm Grace Cagas Chan, Managing Director of Ignite House of Innovation, and I will be your host together with Ignite founder Andrew Yap and Sarah Bangayan of Ignite House Media House. In the next hour, we will be talking about remote work. Let's get started. Take it away, Sarah. So with us today, our, our Gabby Dizon. Hi, Gabby. Hi there. Uh, and his wife, Mench Dizon. Hi, Mench. Hey, guys. Uh, and Murat. Uh, well, it, it will be better if his last name will be uh, said by him. So take it away, Murat. Yeah. Thanks. My name is Murat Knecht. <laughs> if you can pronounce it, I'll give you something for free. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so all of our guests uh, today have years of experience in remote working, which is now the new normal because of the current pandemic that we're currently experiencing. So uh, hello to Gabby, Mesh, and Murat. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, just a short bit, uh, about your work from home experience? Uh, Gabby, you can start first. Okay, uh, I guess I get started. So. I actually started experimenting with remote work models in 2006. So this is when you know we had to use Yahoo Messenger for groups. Uh, this was very early times doing remote work, and not a lot of people believed in it. We've iterated through different forms of it, from going 100% virtual, 80% virtual, and just uh, with some face-to-face -face meetings. So yeah, so overall, I've had probably around 14 years of trying out remote work with different size software teams. Okay, thank you very much for that, Gabby. Uh, can we ask Mench uh, uh, about a little experience uh, of uh, her experience in work, working from home? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Mench. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you see me or is my video on? No, your video Hi, is not on. Okay, here. Hi. Hi. So remote work, uh, fairly recent compared to Gabby, but very much immersed in it just because of living with him <laughs> over the past uh, few years. Um, uh, but lately, I guess the more current remote setup has been quite good. Surprisingly, for someone who is uh, relatively new to this and who, as a person, can't keep still. So mm -hmm. I'd rather be always out there. But uh, this um, crisis has really taught me a lot of patience. Uh, but I guess what has worked so far in a gist is having a routine. Uh, ha being a creature of habit, uh, this has been quite easy for me. But the routine helps in terms of just getting things done and uh, making sure that there is uh, a balance of uh, personal time, work time, uh, and relationship time. So time boxing the life during this uh, period is very, very important. Okay, thank you for that, Mench. Uh, so lastly, uh, can we hear about the Murat's uh, remote work experience? Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, we basically, as a team, had a need to hire remote people. So a couple of years ago, we switched to remote and have been remote ever since. And since then, I've been sometimes working from home, and then it got boring, and then I got traveling a bit. So I've been, I have a base in Cebu, and otherwise, I am yeah, on the road and, and traveling and working from there where internet is. and. Yeah, so I'm trying to, to balance those two things, working from home and working from, from various places, which each has their own challenges. Okay, uh, so so uh, we've heard from our guests about their brief background. So can you take it away, Grax, about the, what this session is about? All right, thank you so much, Gabby, Mensch, and Murat for sharing our quick glimpse of what it's like from home. So actually, my first question is directed towards Gabby. So Gabby, um, after 14 years of doing remote work, it has been your personal and signature advocacy for the better part of your career. 
Now, all of a sudden, remote work is the new normal for millions of people all over the world. So let's focus on Manila, for example. I'm sure many people have reached out to you being the expert of this uh, setup. What are you seeing on the ground right now in Manila? Or uh, in your point of view, what is the current situation of the home right now? So uh, we've been seeing uh, various levels of preparedness for remote work. I think uh, one of the things that made me really passionate about remote work was just the level of traffic uh, in Manila itself and how much time that was being lost by people who had to commute, you know, two hours going to work, two hours going from work, they're doing their commute four hours doing an eight hour job and they're losing so much of their lives uh, in productivity just so that they can do the thing that they want to do every day that will earn them money. So uh, this was uh, one of the reasons why um, I was very passionate about spreading uh, remote work. And especially, you know, if you help decongest the metro, if you help, um, if you help traffic flow a little better, then it's better for um, collective uh, society living in Manila as a whole. And now that we are forced uh, by the current situation to work from home, we've really seen uh, different levels of preparedness, whereas maybe smaller companies that are more flexible have, or more familiar with technology and tools have an easier time uh, moving, transitioning to remote work. And you see uh, companies, teams that have more of a set way of doing things, a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, um, they're having a much harder time transitioning. And yes, a lot of uh, companies, a lot of people, HR departments, uh, they've reached out to me and uh, are asking how to get started. And this is why uh, I started uh, giving the free remote ready webinars since last week. And uh, we tell people, you know, it's not magic. It's uh, having these systems, processes, your culture and tools in place so that you're able to support remote work and you're able to have a culture of uh, just production, performance, and accountability while you're not able to see its other system. So I think for people who already are used to having these processes uh, and tools, it's not as hard uh, transitioning to remote work because you're not as dependent on having to see the person in front of you all the time and asking about, you know, what's the process? What's the update of this? How are you doing with that? If you actually have uh, the, the processes and the tools to support this, then going remote is a lot easier for you. But those who are really very dependent on face-to-face -face meetings and interaction, I think they're really struggling right now and having a much, much harder time adapting. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, I think our founder, uh, Andre Yap, would like to ask something in relation to that. Go ahead, Andre. Hey, thank you, everyone. Uh, Gabby, Mench, Murat, nice to meet you all. Nice, nice to see you again, Gab and Mench. Just, Hi, uh, Andre. Just a sound check. Can you guys hear me? All and right. you're fine. Okay. Um, let's start with the big corporates now because there's uh, the world of... Um, work from home is not created equal. No? There are big corporates, there are small, smaller teams. Like for us, in our, in our, in our case, um, about 30 people. We found it actually the past uh, uh, week has been um, extra productive. We're always a productive team, but it's an extra productive. I think we're getting twice, uh, <laughs> twice as many things done in, in, in the same amount of time. You know, So um, I was telling the team that... Um, uh, even before we started transitioning, uh, to begin with, we, we transitioned um, overnight, um, entirely uh, uh, work from home. But I was saying that this is a chance for us to explore this new world. And um, let's not expect that uh, when things normalize, that we will go back to the old ways of doing things. So for us, uh, it's been a really good um, experience. Of course, it's not perfect. Uh, but in terms of productivity, in terms, in, in terms even of people's intensity and focus on getting things done, it's been... Um, it's been wonderful. So let's start with the other side of the um, the others the other side of the spectrum, which is bigger companies. Um, mm -hmm. 
for those of them who are in the audience, um, because this conversation really exists at two levels. One is if you're sort of a, a senior manager, a senior executive, you have to lead teams. What, uh, what's your outlook? What's your approach? What are the top three things you need to be doing? On the other hand, if you're the one working from home, you're just worrying about, in, in, in a sense, yourself. So that's another conversation. How do you work from home? Versus how do you, as a leader, manage teams, uh, 30 teams, 300 teams, 300-person uh, teams working from home? So let's, let's slice up the conversation first and talk about um, from a manager's, from a leader's uh, perspective. You're trying to manage, you know, up more than 50 people, 100 people. What, what's the reality as best you can sense if you can paint the picture? Because you've seen this before, right? Yeah. Day one, what does it look? What what's it look? What was the past week looking like for um, for bigger teams? And how do they how do they set a course where they can more fully optimize their uh, work from home uh, situation? Okay, so I think one one thing that is uh, common with bigger teams is that there is a, a large amount of coordination uh, within different functions to to get an output done. So what's really important here is to uh, know uh, what your expectations are and how to track them via dashboards. So dashboards via two things. Uh, one is that if you have a product, you, can, you should be able to see how your product is doing in terms of, for example, are they KPIs? Can you see dashboards for your uh, sales, conversion, retention? What is your funnel looking like? And second, uh, the dashboard in terms of process. So process meaning, for example, uh, since I work with a software company making games, uh, what does your project management process look like? And how is that being managed? Is someone taking care of that? And what are the processes and communication loops that reinforce the coordination of work being done? So when I say coordination loops, uh, for example, we have a daily stand-up at the start of every day, let's say around 9.30 a.m., which is around a 15-minute meeting to coordinate what needs to be done, coordinated for the day, and who you need uh, in, uh, to complete the work you're doing. We have, uh, we have weekly goals that each, company, uh, each, each team uh, must have so that they know what they have to accomplish uh, by the end of the week. We also have a weekly uh, loop of just company updates, so virtual town hall style where the company knows how we're doing and what our priorities are for each week. And then we have larger milestones, which may be four to six weeks. So you can cut up a large piece of work to be done. For example, uh, a piece of software that you have to launch in six weeks, you can cut that up into, for example, weekly or uh, uh, bi-weekly goals and then cut that up to daily tasks and then check in so that kind of uh, different uh, uh, that kind of communication uh, feedback loops is very important so that you can track progress and actually work towards your larger goals even without being able to see each other i think uh, mensch can speak better about uh, what it is to be a worker transitioning on remote so i'll, I'll focus more on this on the manager side yeah, uh, before we go over to um, Mench, Gab, uh, thanks for uh, uh, shedding light on that. I mean, I gathered already a lot of uh, notes uh, from just your three minutes uh, worth of reply. Uh, some of the keywords that were ringing in my head as you were uh, responding was um, KPIs, being very clear about not just results, but what are your uh, key metrics on the way to metrics or milestones and being very clear about that because that's what you're ultimately dashboarding and checking on or checkpointing on uh, on a regular basis is there a uh, cadence of um, when you're doing remote from uh, remote work of how often you check in with a team is it more daily is it more weekly uh, do, do you have any insights on that so uh, we have different cadences and it, uh, it depends on what type of communication uh, needs to be done. So there is a daily cadence that uh, so I was talking a little bit earlier about the, uh, about the morning uh, check-in. Uh, so the, that's the daily stand-up. So that's just 
15 minutes, here's the status of what I'm doing, here are any blockers, and here's what I need to get it done. Throughout the day, we have what we call online core hours. So for us, it's uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. where you may not necessarily be doing work the entire 10 to 6, but you need to be online and responsive during that time. In case someone needs to talk to you, someone that has a question, you need, you need to give a piece of data, you have to be uh, online and, uh, and reachable during those hours. And then we, we have the larger ones, uh, like weekly, uh, weekly, bi-weekly, that where we check on whether we are meeting our larger goals. So it's very important to think about the different cadences that are uh, necessary depending on what type of communication is needed. And uh, I also have to add that there are also different communication styles that, uh, that can support you toward these goals. So for example, uh, at Altitude Games, we don't do any email internally because email is very slow and uh, it's kind of hard to figure out what's really going on. So if you need to talk to someone immediately, there is text chat, especially if you need a set of specific instructions. Uh, voice chat is there if you need to ideate on something, if you need a back and forth. Uh, if there is some uh, an emotional nuance required, video chat is the best. And then group calls are great if you're doing a one-to-many update. So yeah, th there are also different types of communication depending on what kind of information you either wish to impart or you wish to get from your teammate. Thanks, Gab. Um, uh, Murat, uh, I get the sense the, that you are also approaching this more from a... Uh, management's perspective. So, do you have uh, anything to to add, uh, or uh, yeah, um, yeah, with regards to the question of how leaders and managers uh, pull off uh, work from home? Sure. Thanks, Andre. Um, there is, I think, for larger corporations and teams, there is already a good deal of processes in place now, and. Um, you couldn't manage a 300 person team without any processes and tools no? so often this is already in place and then they go remote and the question is more about um yeah can the can the system actually handle so many people working from home i was talking with somebody from a bank and they found out when everybody worked at from home that their vpn solution for example didn't work for even 10 percent of the employees working from home they never tested this so you might run into those kind of technical issues and then uh, yeah I think that there is, of course, a great deal of, of things that you can um, try as a remote team. But at the beginning, I think it's important to, to stick with what you know, to have some sense of stability, because everybody already has so much to figure out on their own. And then, um, so you have your processes already largely covered. You then can then tweak a bit, but that's, that'll usually be all right. The, the interesting thing then is humans. No, You need to really take care of humans. And that's then the entire, entirely different area. So you have to work in the processes and then you have the humans. And I think at the beginning, when you rush remote in this way, then you really need to invest extra in, in just making sure that people are okay and that they're not overwhelmed and that they can get their job done. Um, Andre, I think you're speaking, but we can't hear you. You're absolutely right. Yeah. My next question would have been how to shut up the neighbor's dogs. But um, let's see if we can survive this. Uh, Murat and uh, Gabby, um, is there, because Murat mentioned um, numbers uh, getting into the hundreds already, is there, uh, as, as one single uh, leader, is there an optimal number uh, of work from home? uh members of your team beyond which you shouldn't attempt it you really should um for example if i'm man managing 300 people should i just um maybe have my one downs uh, uh uh managing a sub segment of those so that i'm really just meeting with a small team one down. what's what's your uh what's your sense of that optimal um, so, of, yeah. so for me it can scale to maybe hundreds people or even thousands as long as you're bringing it down to the level of the team so a team is just maybe the number of people that can really work together towards a single goal and uh if you're talking about a team working on a single project it might look like a smaller amount of people maybe around 10 to 15 but 
if you have a large if you have a large uh, project that requires hundreds of people for example how can you drill that into teams so that you have smaller subunits that are empowered to make decisions and can contribute to the larger goal at hand so you you we we've seen companies such as for example automatic which is the company that creates wordpress the the blogging software that has four, more than 500 people and almost completely remote and they even have their people across different time zones around the world which is something that is very hard to do because of uh just coordination purposes so for me it's really more of a question of how do you coordinate how do you set up the teams how can you uh how to, can you create sub unit and sub goals that uh that contribute to the larger goal above and who is keeping track of that as you go from the individual teams to the very top of the project again i i just take note from, from notes from uh, master gabi no sub teams so from bigger teams sub teams and sub sub uh, sub tasks if you will or sub uh, sub metrics with sub dashboards yeah. i think I, i think the key is uh, slicing up such a big thing into i mean it's no it's no different from uh, working uh, i mean face to face right it, it, it's just that um, there's a lot less room for for error and um, uh, lack of focus um, when you're i mean that's what one thing we've certainly discovered in in just the one week is that everyone is more focused there's a lot less slack even in people's when people are present they're present and it's and it's intense the other thing is uh, smaller teams um, uh, breaking down and working on uh, smaller tasks again uh, as as you I mean just uh, to reiterate what you had uh, uh, mentioned um, at this point uh, Grax and Sara I think I'd like to before we leave the topic of management and leaders and uh, move on to okay as a remote worker what are the tips which is something we'd like to bring mensch into uh, maybe we should open the floor um, to our guests to to have a question or two specifically on the um, area of if I'm a manager if I'm a leader how do I do this um, with my 100 people with my 300 people or with my 30 people Okay, so I am actually seeing a few friends here online with us uh, who are working in, in big organizations. For example, Raymond Ong. Uh, Ram is here. Raymond, are you there? Hello, Raymond. Okay, so yeah, we will... The floor is open uh, if anybody would like to ask a question. We're just opening the floor right now. Just type uh, Okay, we have a question from Dandy Alandi. Go ahead Dandy. Hi. Um this question, I don't know who can answer this better, maybe Murat or Gabby, but my question really is is there any industry that you find quite hard to adapt to work from home setup or practically every kind of company every industry you can actually work from home and actually thrive okay so my reply to that and i don't know if morat will agree with me is that anyone who is doing uh, knowledge work uh, can uh, can adapt to a work from home process of course if you you're handling physical things like your factory you're in retail then some people have to be physically there but even in those industries those that are doing the management which means the ones maybe on uh, looking at the dashboards optimizing flow they don't need to be there uh, every single second of the day so you don't have to necessarily be in software like uh, like I am uh, but as long as you have uh, processes that you can uh, take to uh, Uh, dashboards and tools uh, you can do that online then you can take your work uh, remote uh, Murat what do you think yeah I think that's of course the, the basic requirement there is there is one group of people who are a bit unfortunate maybe because they can't go remote as easily that's that's around security and safety of information like healthcare workers and so on 
anything that has to do with sensitive data, it might be difficult to just, you know, grab your laptop and go, go out of the office. There might be then a few issues to figure out, but that's ultimately it's about regulations and those kind of things. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Dandy. Uh, anybody else? I think uh, I Wang would like to ask something. Yeah, hi. Um, a question to Gabby and Morat. Oh, sorry. Is it is it my turn? Okay. Um, I wanted to ask because it seems doable that we cascade tasks with work from home, but how do you maintain culture in that kind of environment? Okay, so uh, for me, the culture is actually the operating system of, uh, of your company, which means culture is a set of actions that uh, uh, your company looks to when, uh, when situations come up. And the culture usually stems from uh, the personal values and beliefs of the founder. Uh, usually, the culture is not really something that is, I would say, explicitly explicitly said. It's something that the, the employees pick up on by interacting with the founders, with the executive team, with the early hires, and see how how the founders, the leaders of the company, react to certain certain situations in the company. So, if you're doing remote work, you have to be very explicit about your culture, your culture, your values, what, what the things are that are important to you, how you would uh, react to things. So this is something that we uh, really take uh, care of, like we, we take very seriously at Altitude. So uh, even early on in our company, we have something like company handbook, where, you know, usually it's only larger companies that have a handbook. Uh, even at two, three years old, we have a handbook, we have an onboarding guide, for our employees, and uh, we we take the time every week during our all hands meeting to uh, to reaffirm what our values are, why we are here, and why why do we exist? Why do we work at Altitude rather than just showing up to get paid every day? So it's something that you have to very proactively communicate, and uh, the culture is really it's really built in the communication. And even if you you're not in the same room, you can build that. But you have to be maybe two x, maybe five x more proactive about that communication. Murat, did you have something to add there? Uh, maybe that one part of culture often is understood as something the the fun between humans, let's say, you know, the the, the connections that people have, the the way that the team, the the feeling, the chemistry, and there are simply um. That, that is not as easy. You can't just grab a couple of um, beers or tea or whatever it is, milk tea, um, and, and sit around the table and have fun. It's a bit harder. You need to put in more effort, but it is possible. For example, after this call, I'm going to be spending an hour playing a board game online with my team because this is how we yeah, stick together, have fun, have time to talk. Well, those were, uh, uh, that's an excellent question, uh, uh, Chini. Um, how do I know that? Because you took the words out, right out of my mouth. I was about to ask uh, exactly those questions. And I, I uh, again, would like to reiterate Gabby's words that um, in, in, in remote, when it comes to culture, actually when it comes to everything, everything is 5X, 10X. Everything is much more magnified. Um, so culture almost uh, becomes... Uh, a lot more obvious when you're working online. At least uh, to me, for example, in the in the week that we've uh, uh, that our team has worked together uh, remotely, uh, it's it's been very uh, clear to me what our culture was because of the the contrast of environments and how what we said are the important things to us is what I am seeing. Um, in reality, as we work, as we transition to uh, an almost upside down world, I see the same uh, values and, and cultures. So that's very nice. Can we, um, unless somebody has a burning question on the management leadership side of remote work, uh, which we can go back to later on, anybody else? If not, can we switch? Uh, I see Raymond. Yeah. Did, uh, Raymond had a question. Hello, uh, good afternoon, Andre, Grace, and everyone. 
I'm Good sorry, I couldn't respond earlier. Uh, just a quick question uh, on Gabby. Hi, Gabby and uh, Murad. Um, I remember, Gabby, in our last conversation, you mentioned how um, when you're interviewing for staff, you're already screening people who are uh, more uh, in inclined to uh, right. adjust to remote working. Uh, now, because of the COVID-19 situation, it's actually being forced on people. And uh, of course, uh, there's adjustments that are mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. uh, in your uh, opinion, both you and Murad, uh, the typical uh, adjustment challenges that companies have to be aware of and uh, best practices with regards to helping them transition to the remote work uh, arrangement, considering that it's being forced on them. And of course, uh, being a change management uh, initiative, it's going to be difficult uh, to uh, to adjust to this. Okay, so uh, just uh, two things on my end that you, uh, I think that are uh, most important to take note of. First is that you have to help give your employees a structure, uh, especially now that they're not going to the office you have to give them a structure wherein they can really think about blocking off uh, a set uh, amount of time while they are at home and thinking of this as really work time and i think uh, Mitch will be actually uh, going into more detail on that uh, later um, and the second is that uh, there is a lot more reinforcement on following the process and the tools I think with a lot of companies that grow organically, especially those that are fast-growing companies, uh, sometimes uh, the tools in the processes go in the wayside because uh, people can always say, oh, but we're performing and you can see what's happening. So uh, if you're not using the tools and processes while you're doing remote, you're basically flying blind. And it's really important that uh, the people who are actually doing the work. So, for example, you may be a salesperson, you may be following your leads. Uh, you have to put your uh, you have to put your funnel in a CRM, uh, like a Salesforce or a Pipe Drive. And uh, you, the manager, will should not be able to accept that they're doing their work without the proper documentation, because you need to have the accurate data in your dashboards and. Looking at the dashboard is the only way that you can see if the company is humming along at scale because you don't want someone whose job it is to ping all of your employees every day and ask them what they're doing. Okay. Uh, to, 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 add, to quickly add, uh, Gabby uh, Murad, uh, challenges and concerns about social isolation. Uh, have you encountered these types of problems? And if yes... Uh, suggestions on how to uh, address it. Amurat might want to uh, go first here. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, that, that is something that everybody struggles with. And now this is, of course, um, twice as bad no? because of everybody has to stay home. <laughs> and um, so there's, in a sense, there is only so, uh, there's two parts here. One is that that there is only so much that you as a, as a boss ultimately can do here no as a manager there is the work part and you need to try to help your 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 team but there is only so much you can do but what you can do is try to um, get this team feeling there this team structure as Gabby just uh, pointed out try to establish that so that it helps people so that this gives them a framework to get through the at least the work part of the day <laughs> and at some point then you you also have to let go with just the other very difficult part for managers going remote you have to let go a bit of control and you you can't see people working you can't all this stuff you have to let it let a bit go and yeah. so this is a, a good time to practice that i guess Okay, um, on our end, there are a few things that we can do that can at least mitigate the social isolation. I'll talk about the first thing that we used to do was that uh, even though we're a mostly remote team, we actually instituted this thing in our company called Cowork Wednesdays. We, had a, we have a small office in Makati, and, and while it wasn't required to go there, a lot of in-person team meetings that uh, required a lot of group discussion, brainstorming, um, if they're post-mortems, for example, trying to figure out what to do next. A lot of it used to happen at the office. 
now that, of course, that's not an option at the moment. So uh, we do several things. One is that um, we, we have a separate channel for uh, just water cooler chat. So people can discuss random things, interests. So not our discussion in our chat rooms is not 100% about work. Uh, we have dedicated channels where they can also show their interests and their personal lives. Uh, second, uh, now that people cannot go out, we are scheduling um, periodic uh, video or audio hangouts where people can just talk to each other. Um, we found that people didn't want to do this all day because it's distracted with work, but maybe for a one-hour stretch during the day, there's a, there's a Google Meet hangout link off open where people can chat, and this helps with people who are you know suffering from some form of cabin fever. And the third is that we, we, the leaders of the company, so myself, our creative director, our art director, uh, we personally told everyone that we are open for one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one calls. Just uh, if people are feeling anxious, need someone to talk to, or trying to figure out whether how our company is going to survive and thrive through this situation, uh, the, all, all of the management are open for one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one calls with the rest of the company. Thank you, gentlemen. It's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good to see you again. Huh? Um, Great to see you, Andre. Thank you. Yeah, stick around. We're just uh, halfway through. Um, so let's expand this conversation now to uh, Mench, uh, Gabby, and uh, Murat. Uh, what uh, go, ex going now to the experience of somebody working from home rather than somebody managing people who are working from home? So the work from homes uh, experience. Um, what are the top three? Can we start with no nos? Since we're all relative newbies here um, on work from home, Mensch, might we start from you? I know you're uh, somewhat of a new. Newbie as well, relatively speaking, but I'm sure you've heard the uh, war stories from Gabby all these uh, years. Um, so what would you say are the top three no-nos of somebody like me working from home? Uh, wait, maybe I, from a uh, personal experience, just going through the, the past couple of weeks. Um, Maybe the first that works that works for me is uh, just trying to do too many things and trying to fit a lot of things into your day. That's why I spoke earlier about the importance of time boxing. Time boxing just really puts in place the top things that you need to do in a day. And I think the, the risk of just being home is just you... Be because you think you're idle or you're just like home, you need to do a lot of things. Actually, um, if you do that, you'll end up just feeling tired and uh, not accomplishing a, a lot of things. So I've, uh, I've uh, focused on just maybe w one or two things uh, that I need to do per day. So that's one. The second is um, not mixing personal space and workspace. So the context switching is important. Uh, not, I know not a lot of people have the um, space and the privilege of uh, um, a space to have uh, for your work and a space to have for your family or personal space, but um, as, as best as you can. Just so there's a shift in mindset when you go into the and flow into the different parts of your day. Because it's easy for things to just meld into one day. Uh, so the time boxing and the delineating of space is important. Uh, the third is to, I guess, pause throughout the day. Uh, the pausing allows you also to transition from work to life, to play, right? The pausing also allows you to think whether you're doing what you're supposed to do during the day. So I guess for me, those are the three things that has worked uh, for me, um, not just in the past week, but uh, 
maybe as I've been working over the past few years as well. So, boxing in your your time, boxing in your space, and boxing in even your mindset as to where you are right now versus where you're going to be two hours from now. Did I hear that right, Mench? Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, do uh, Murat or uh, Gab have anything to add to, you know, critical no-nos or, uh, or must-dos? Since that's what the bench offered us when you somebody working from home. Okay, I think one thing that I would uh, more uh, it's more of enforce very strongly is to really separate your sense of your professional time from your personal time. So it's not just space, as Mench said. So it, it's better if you have a space where uh, you uh, where you think of as where you're doing work. But because a lot of us are doing knowledge work, we're in front of our computers. It's easy to be, for example, uh, you're doing your video chat in one tab, then you have your Netflix in another tab, you have your Lazada open in another tab. So it's really important to, uh, to really uh, focus that when you're doing work, you're doing work. And when you, know, you can take a break, it doesn't mean you're doing this for eight hours straight. But... Uh, when when you would want to take a break, that's when you would want to look at your entertainment, your shopping, your family. Maybe you have to take a one-hour break to uh, prepare a meal to your family. So it's good to have that schedule wherein there is maybe one to two hours in the morning, one to two hours in the afternoon where you're doing deep focused work and that's the only thing you are focused on. And uh, and. Uh, you can also divide that into time that you are coordinating and time where you are creating. And when you are creating, you are not, uh, you're not doing a lot of coordination. You're not being interrupted. So knowing how to divide that uh, is really crucial to having a productive workday at home. Yeah, let me um, add to that if I can. Um, the, the biggest no-no for me is um, not communicating. Like imagine uh, like you're, um, you're the, I don't know, the, the manager and um, you just don't get a response anymore from somebody. This is not about focusing time, like you said, Gavin, oh, you need to have focus time, sure. Um, but this is about there is a problem and the other person just stops responding because that is the moment when, when I, as a remote manager, have no options anymore. I cannot help you. I cannot. I cannot reach out. I cannot. I cannot fix the problem. I cannot even find out what the problem is because you're not talking. So you, as a remote um, um, employee, you need. You always need to be communicating on some level. You, this is not about focus, focus time and all this stuff. This is this is aside. But you need to generally respond. You no, know, because that's the, the this communication channel is the only link in remote work that keeps this relationship alive. So that's that's super important. I had this once. Somebody didn't respond anymore, and I was there, there was nothing I could do. Um, and the other one is that that remote people really need to understand that the responsibility is now on them to communicate, to reach out, to to fix problems. No, if you're in an office and your internet doesn't work, um, yeah, okay, there is an office manager taking care of it. But if it's your home internet not working, then this is on you and you can't expect anybody else to do this. And this is just one example. Generally, you have a lot more responsibility on you. Uh, yeah, those two things I want to add. Great answers, great answers. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Sarah and Grax, uh, back to you guys. If not, we'll open it up to the floor again. Thanks so much. Um, I think for now, let's open the floor to our guests uh, before we wrap things up. Um, is there anybody who would like to ask questions or say something or uh, give us um, uh, your thoughts or feelings about um, your situation at home right now? If um, you're having a hard time or any sharings on the floor? Well, I think the 
our guests. Uh, do, do you still have questions? Uh, Let me throw something in. Okay, so this uh, phenomenon, I'm ready to hashtag it. Um, can I be heard? Yes. Of uh, being home, but not really being home. So this is now the opposite side, is how my family is seeing me. Because on one hand, I'm physically home. And obviously, they're physically home also all the time in this unnatural situation we're all in. Um, but then I'm physically and mentally um, just tied to my work, tied to my computer. Um, how do you deal with uh, guilty feelings like that, I, I, I suppose is, is my question. Make me feel better. Ah, that's uh, that's that's a really really you know, good question because especially if you have kids at home or you have a partner at home that uh, doesn't do the same thing that you do maybe they're not doing knowledge work it would be easy for them to uh, I would say assume that you are available all the time and all day um, and it it does take a little bit of a transition for uh, the rest of your family. To, uh, to just adjust to you being there but not being available. So certain things like knowing that a specific part of the house is your office and um, if they need to reach you, then they cannot just barge in. They can either knock or maybe text you and while you are doing your work at uh, four hours unless there is uh, maybe an emergency, something that must be dealt with immediately. It's something that they will need to get used to and there may be a transition period where you know your kids or your partner may get maybe uh sad offended that you know why aren't you responding to me but it's it's something that you need to enforce actually one of the things that i say to people is that it's a lot easier to have just one person in uh in a couple uh, living together working from home than having both of them work from home because when when you're both there then you might be competing for space or someone might need something done and it's uh, it's actually harder than you know than when one goes to the office and one has their home as the office okay wait let me call my wife okay <laughs> can you repeat that <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man what do you have to say Hi. Agree. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I think the the having a a space uh, for for family and for work is important. And in terms of like uh, the things that need to get done at home, also it's delineating who does what. Like Gabby does the homeschooling. I do the house chores. Uh, and also finding uh, uh, like. For me, it, the time boxing, space boxing, and uh, context switching is super important. That helps a lot in terms of just keeping everyone sane. Hi. Can I just add something to that? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so I was having a conversation with a couple of our colleagues the other day about this. And I think one thing that really came up really, that would really help couples or those with families working from home is setting expectations is in line with um, what Mench and Gabby were saying. Um, this has to be very clear. You have to sit down with your family, with your partner, with your kids, even if they're small still, no? Being able to explain to them that this is my time to work. This is our time to play. This is our time when we will eat. This is your task. This is my task. And without that clear setting of expectations, um, you know, communication, of course, is number one. So that has to be set as soon as possible so that um, everything will just flow when it comes to the harmonious relationship in the house and being able to be whole as well when you're doing work. Yeah, that's from my end. Thank you, Joanna. Anybody else? We're down to our last 10 minute stretch here with uh, this magnificent trio. So pour them out. Anything else? 
uh, this question is actually this is not a question but I, i'd like to have uh, an advice from our speakers uh, from our guests today like what can they tell us uh, what can they advise us on as newbies in this uh, in this setup As newbies, as someone working from home or as a manager? Uh, well, maybe maybe one side about them from the managing side and one side for the uh, working worker okay. work, working from home. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll take uh, the manager side. Um, so uh, one is that uh, you need to set up your dashboards. Um, so dashboards meaning you, you need to be able to see and for the entire team to have access to the, the metrics that are important to your company. So it might be sales, it might be conversions, it might be retention rate. So it depends on what company it is. But if you're any type of company, you need to have some sort of metrics to know how you're doing. So everyone needs to have uh, online access to those dashboards. Second is that you need to set up your uh your online communication cadences so cadence meaning um what do we talk about uh daily what is our check-in at the start of the day how do we do um how do we do the all hands meeting how do we do planning for the next milestones so these are different cadences of communication that you talk about and third is that you need to set up the proper tools so that these processes are supported. So proper tools, meaning what kind of online chat room do I use? Is it going to be something like Slack? Is it going to be Viber or WhatsApp groups? Is it Messenger? Uh, there are some tools that may be better for the others, but usually just use whatever works for your team. So for example, uh, someone asked me late last week, you know, we, we are a team of Maybe the, the mancom is made up of older people in their 40s, 50s. They're not used to Slack. How, how do I get them to use proper tools? And I just told them, um, for example, if they're used to Facebook Messenger, then use Messenger. They're, not, uh, they're already used to using some tech tools personally. You can apportion like the business version of that and have them work with that and ease them into technology that's, uh, that you can use to support remote work. Okay, that's it on my end. Okay, maybe uh, maybe Mench can share, I guess, for the side of the worker. Or more. Yeah, I guess uh, just reiterating what Gabby said, the uh, importance of having a cadence, like you have a work cadence and a personal cadence. And as you go throughout your day, it's also being aware of your energy because now more than ever you have to be mindful when you do your best work so you can do your focused and deep thinking work during that time and uh, like if in the afternoon your energy is much lower you can do more coordination or monitoring type of work um, and then I think what helps is really embracing this time and not willing it to be otherwise because uh, this is what we have at the moment and how we can try to make do with uh, what we have at uh, at this time and to not forget to take care of ourselves um it's easy to just uh wallow in the worry uh but instead it's good to uh direct that towards movement towards taking care of ourselves keeping healthy um uh, mind heart and body so i guess those are things that can that has been helping so far Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, thank you for uh, the insights, uh, Gabby and Mench, and also for uh, from Murat. So, uh, thank you to everyone who's here. Uh, thank you for everyone for their time today and share their knowledge, and to everyone who learned with us today. So, uh, Rax, do you have anything to add more before we close the session? Yeah, thank you so much for our guests. Um, I do have a shameless plug. Um, we would just like to invite everyone um, to our next shows or our next growth labs. 
Um, Ignite Manila is hosting a series of web webcasts that will help you and your companies cope with the situation we're currently experiencing right now. So tomorrow, please do catch another session um, at 10.30 a.m. It's going to be a really, um, it's a, going to be a rich uh, conversations again with Andre and Miguel Aranaz. Um, about how we can use this 100-hour launch pad um, in order for you guys to lead your teams and in order for you guys to be effective and efficient in, as to really collaborating with each other. Also, on Wednesday, 2 p.m., we have another special guest. Uh, we will be featuring James Hargrove of Eventy Search Asia. And... We will be talking about how grit uh, can help us um, overcome this challenge or this adversity. So that's all uh, from me right now. Andre, would you like to say um, a few things before we end? Well, giant thanks to Murat, uh, Gabby, and uh, Mench. Gabby and Mench, good to see you again. Good to see both of you well. And uh, Murat, uh, when all of this blows over, I would uh, definitely like the chance to meet you um, in real life. I think thank you for all the audience who joined us. Um, 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds worth of recap. Uh, what I learned was, you know, everything we're supposed to do well as managers, as leaders, on one hand, and then everything we're supposed to do well as, uh, as employees, as workers, you know, work-life balance, um, being very focused, um, all those things, it just becomes more magnified um, in a work from home situation. So if anything, it forces us to be at our best. And um, I, for one, love that. I love that for myself. I love that for my team. I hope we're all going to come out of this, uh, this opportunity uh, much stronger as people, as teams, and as organizations. So thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next uh uh, sequence of 30 days growth pad. Here's thank you, Andre. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye.